Right, part two, Steve Dixon. We've got uh, questions that everyone's been answering, a bit different for you, because they've been for riders, most of the others. Think, okay. Uh, so I think you've answered some of them, maybe, on in the first one. But first one, do you have a favourite GP venue to go to and why? Uh, Apart from Matley. Well, I've never actually like, yeah, gone there as a mechanic, but no, I mean, for any of the British GP, Fox Hill was, uh, you know, was great. I mean, it's just, it's more, you know, because the adrenaline, you yeah. know, the, yeah, going there, you know, everyone and yeah, they're actually, they're, you know, they're more chaos. I mean, the, that's the good thing about having the GPs far away um, at, at the beginning is that you know you get in you know you can get into it but you know at the British GP everyone's like talking to you everyone's oh, around but chaos yeah so it's actually yeah it's hard but you know it's sort of good you know the excitement looking forward to it and stuff like that and yeah you know it's um it's where you sort of you're going to see all your friends and stuff like that people that you used to race against people that you used to maybe go to school with you know, and, and and they're there and they're seeing you at work and yeah. half of them forget that you're at work and then, you know, yeah. Yeah. think you're ignoring because you're not speaking, right. but you got to like get ready for race two or something. A million things on your mind, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you know, all, all um, you know, venues are sort of, you know. Got their own. As long as they got good, yeah. I mean, you know, Bulgaria, you go to Bulgaria and you've got no crowd or anything, but you've got fantastic Amazing. pits and facilities and, oh, yeah, you know, me media and the power space and everything, you know, so, yeah, and, and you go to, you know, the garages at, you know, some of the GPs and, yeah. you know, Su Sugo in 91, all, you know. Spa all, garages, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. Zolder was, pretty, yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I do find, uh, yeah, I do find it different. I mean, uh, Donington was Donington yeah, terrible, you know, because it had no atmosphere. No, you know, track, track was too far away. It wasn't good for so, um, spectators, was it? No, no. I mean, so they're all they all have their sort of good and bad points, but yeah, for like adrenaline as as to what you're actually doing, Fox Hill was the one and. You know, any you say any of the British GPs. Um, yeah. 90, yeah, Fox Hills in the nineties. That atmosphere, I've never, I've never seen anything compared to that. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, apart from Matley at the Nations and stuff. Well, uh, I mean, they they have been, yeah, the Nations at yeah. Matley was probably the closest. When, when Billy, crowd. When Billy, uh, when Billy led, uh, yeah, I mean, the crowd was like sixty thousand, but when Billy led. You know, the, the nation, Matley, but it's a bit more spread out because Fox oh, was in the, back, in the valley. It, yeah, yeah was, that's people, right. Was it? Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, you know, like anything, you know, the the venue, whether it's a, a night out with people or whether it's a GP or football match, it's it's just about you know the who you're with and how things are going. If, if you're yeah. having a miserable time and your bike's broken, then it's a it's not the place to be. No. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, there was, I, I would say, that, you know, that's sort of pretty much what sticks out. What was the track we were at in Belgium? 2002, maybe? Billy ended up in the last chance qualifier and it pissed down. Um, fuck, I can't remember the track, but it was like, it was really nice all day and then the last chance come out and then he ended up, we had to, it was a new bike the next day, I think, because it was like real sort of gritty sand, sort of in the trees a little bit. Robbie Reynard actually turned up one year there. I don't know, it's not that, because it was 2001, it was um, Grubble Donk where uh, Yogi won on our bike, and it was like a f two foot of water. And yeah. Um, yeah, they're pretty miserable when you when it's really, that might have been Grubble Donk actually, yeah. And it was rough, really bad on the bikes. A bit like yeah. Lockett and that, where you just pretty much right off a bike. Oh, gosh, yeah. Some of the tracks, are, some of those tracks are pretty rough, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But. All right. Yeah. That was good. You've, right. You've obviously worked with some great riders. Uh, any standout 
that were good at testing? Um, well, Neil Shepard, he was fantastic at um, testing. He, you know, he could ride a standard bike phenomenal. He, he would just know the meat of the power. Hmm. So, uh, but he wasn't a rever. I mean, no, he's really I guess, smooth. yeah, he was really smooth. I, I guess they all have to become a good tester with us in the end. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you get, uh, you get some that are very, I think some that are very technically minded and they, they want to know everything yeah. and then they understand the bike and sometimes that's a good yeah. thing. I sometimes, yeah. I think with Zach was very good like that. that. Zach was, yeah, Zach was brilliant like that. Um, Billy was, you know, he could ride anything. Carl Nunn just could ride, but, yeah. Yeah. you know, he, he wasn't interested in, uh, you know, in being technical. He just wanted to go around the track fast. And, yeah. you know, he, he had great technical ability. Um, yeah, Billy, you know, he he was up and down, you know, in testing. <laughs> it depends. On, but, yeah, I mean, if, if you'd had Billy then with his ability to go into the first corner and his aggression and now his knowledge of say being enthusiastic into bikes and he's stuff really, like that he's very much into all the technical side now yeah yeah then uh yeah but, you know we had him at sort of 14 and he was just wanted yeah. to go fast and he he's, did he was just fast on anything yeah yeah so i mean although i've, I've watched i went to a couple of local races with him last year where there's 450 and the cr 500 and stock cr 500 i i did a load of work on the 450 we had it set up and he had eastwood did the suspension and yeah. done the work on the engine but he jumped on the 500 and was so much quicker on that thing really yeah oh like ridiculous because he could just jump on it he, he enjoyed he loved it he just loved the the fact that it was 500 and he's yeah. so fast. i see, I see so he's still riding in australia now isn't he yeah and he's still really quick really yeah really quick on on that thing yeah, he's enjoying himself, and he's there's no pressure. He's well, still phenomenally fast. Still away with fairies. <laughs> <laughs> I said sometimes he's still away with fairies. Oh, he's no, I, I, he's <laughs> fast. Yeah, I know he's a great guy, and oh, yeah. yeah, it was a lot of years with us. Yeah, yeah. but um, no, I mean, no. I, I find I find the foreigners more you know they think a lot more you know like yogi used to think a lot more yeah, and i say andrew andrew did you know even dean and right. he, even now even now sort of um you know they all sort of right. seem to be like that yeah yeah wilson's a bit yeah. like that right. i think the the british riders a bit more happy-go-lucky Maybe. Jump on and something and go fast, yeah. Yeah, maybe. Right. Especially about if, if you've had Big Bill. Um, <laughs> no, I, 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 you know, I've had some really good banters with the dads. You know. Yeah. You know that Big Bill. You know Billy's dad was fantastic. You know Mel's dad. Big I Mel. I remember all the horror stories we heard about Julian's dad before he came. Yeah, he, yeah. He wrote for the team, and his dad was fine. He was. We have yeah, all Zach, Zach's dad. You know, I mean, yeah. to me, to me, that the dad is the biggest ally you could have on a team. You know, someone oh. that's totally interested. They're two hundred percent behind their, um, their kids, son. and you know, yeah. and ultimately they've got them to where where they are. Yeah, where they are in the first place. So you can't dismiss them, and you know, you've oh. got to try and you know learn from the fathers as as to um, you know what. To work with the, what that, strengths yeah. you can get out working yeah. together you know they're, they're the one that will sort of wipe their ass if they're bleeding or you know or yeah about a bad day or if it's like jason higgs and he weaves himself for the start and yeah. stuff like that um, <laughs> Fill his boots with this, yeah yeah you know stuart nunn and yeah you know paul's dad brian you know they're mm. they're all you know they're all a good asset yes um you know sometimes you know, and it's obviously, it's hard sometimes, you know, the father-son relationship, you know, that, you know, sometimes they have arguments and stuff like that. Yeah. And, you know, I, I always remember we was in um, 
It must be hard for a, a dad to let the son go into oh, God. and let yeah, them and, yeah. Them. I mean, trust that the team you know, and, behind them and, and and trust them and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I always remember I was in for wherever it was with Mailer and uh, he had a terrible Saturday and his dad Brian said, "So I said I'm going home. I'm going home." So he well, says, "Go on then." And uh, anyway, next day. Uh, I think it might have been Norutran that we was at, and next day, Mail is like leaving the race, and <laughs> came back to the came back to the band and said, "Do you know what? I'm sure, I saw my dad in the trees." <laughs> I said, "Yeah, but he went home yesterday." No, he said, "I'm sure I saw him in the, in the trees." I said, "Well, he can't have." And sure enough, Brian comes over. Well done, Mailer. Well done. <laughs> well done. He said, "Hang on there," and he went off and he went to the. Uh, <laughs> A sweet shop, uh, you know, like the one of the shops, at yeah. the van selling stuff, and w- bought this great big dummy and said, "Next time, <laughs> just spit it out." Fuck on that, yeah. If you want to spit your dummy out, and yeah, you just, you know, that's where you got to sort of trust the rider that if they're having a bad time, you know, that they're having a bad time. They don't want a bad time. They don't do it on purpose. So you no. just have to sort of listen to them and like understand and believe that they're gonna work this out as long as it's nothing on the bike you know and yeah. it's just they're not feeling it and yeah i mean that's um that's where you got to sort of trust the rider and you know trust that they say oh yeah i could hear a funny noise or you know yeah. i don't i don't think i don't really think we've had any i think it's got some, is there every time you think you've had to pull them in line a little bit because the head's up their ass and they they try to adjust everything on the bike try to because they think the bike, you know, the bike was great last week, but now, you know, they just not having yeah. it. And, and they're cha- changing things and they want to change this and that. Yeah. I don't remember. I mean, but it's... I, I remember, you know, with suspension, I used to do all full suspension. And, uh, you know, he used to say, like, just my suspension's good. You know, yeah. it's, it, it's set up for me when I go fast. Exactly. If I'm complaining about it, it means I'm not going fast enough. Yeah, that's and, the best strategy. And then, and then, but if but if I go if I do go fast and and we've made it softer or changed it, then I know I'm going to be out of control. So like, yes, that, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Don't let me change it. Mm. So yeah, you know, which was good and and not many riders have got that. policy. Mm. No, uh, and I mean um, suspension is difficult because when you're on the track, you know, only ten laps, say for practice. You can't, and, and, you know, and, and they're not, they're not like all fast. You, mm. You're only hitting a, a corner. Say you've got a three second corner and you hit it 10 times. You've only spent 30 seconds on that corner. Yeah. Well, you get, you jump in the higher car and go down the road, you know, it takes you 30 seconds to, you know, find out what's going on. So if you've got to think about the track, think of where the bumps are, the bumps are developing, you know, you need to learn the track more than you do change your suspension. You know, yeah. if you know where the bumps are and you know how your suspension is reacting, then, yeah. you know, you need to, um, yeah, you need, you need to have the confidence that you've done the work, you know, beforehand and you know you're going into that race knowing your suspension. Same as if you drive a car every day, you know if it wobbles at 70 miles an hour or this or yeah. that and, it's you know, and you adapt. And, you know, unpredictable. So it's, yeah. yeah, it's better to know what you're doing than, than sort of, um, yeah. you know, change and then it might be better... Yeah, you're always pushing for the yeah for yeah, the yeah. changes, and and obviously you have to change suspension, you know, clickers and that as the track say progresses, yeah. you know, develops bumps. But you know, in general, you know, you don't really want to be messing around too much. And huh. if, you know, uh, I remember back in the day, like Jeremy Watley, he would forever change his suspension, like you right. know, shim shim changes and everything, right. you know, all the time, but. I think we had like six set, six sessions were out on the track back in those days. You had forty minute warm up. Yeah, yeah, you, you had a lot of time, and so you could make, you know, good detailed changes. But now, um, you know, you need to be sort of in the ballpark, you know, before you go, and just a click here and a click there. Right, the bikes. So, but, yeah, yeah. So, and like you said, they're yeah, made, I mean, even they're made a lot better, aren't they? Everything's like you said, you could get gains because. Things that match up, but everything matches up now. Yeah, bikes are cons- consistent every week. Now, yeah, 
you know, I don't carry welding gear to no. weld up the frames because they're gonna fall in half and stuff like that and be held together by throttle cables and yeah. stuff. Yeah, but no, I mean, um, as I say, as, as regards to good testers, you know, most of them are pretty honest at that level, you know. Yeah, it's, that's what they do. It's, um, they understand, yeah, they, yeah. Understand, they understand that. Yeah, and, um, you know, and then also it depends at what level of the, you know, bike development they're at, you know, if, if you came into, you know, anyone that jumped on our 2012 or 13 bike, mm. you know, fell in love with it, but that had been developed by, you know, Billy into Zach into, oh, right. you know, Years of all of those. So, yeah, so you could just jump on it and it's pretty honed. Yeah. But, yeah. So it's that one out of the way. What do you feel is your best achievement as a mechanic? Or in a, there's too many, I suppose. <laughs> Lasting this long. Yeah, yeah, you're still going. <laughs> still going and still being, you know, competitive. <clears throat> um, <coughs> you know, that's that's really, you know, having the long, longevity. Obviously, there's lots of moments, you know, Paul winning, you know, our first GP together. You know, back in the day with Craig Prattley lead, leading the British Championship, you know, we, you know, we go back to 91 and Craig Prattley was um, my rider back then. And, you know, he came down, he lived with me and we'd done so many hours in the off season. We came and he was just like a, a 17 year old. And, you know, he, we went to uh, British Championship and we, you know, we were beating Dobby and Mailer and, Herring and all of those people, and he was he was dominating the British Championship right up until he broke his leg on the 250 at Boltby, and then there was only two races left, and he yeah, he didn't win the British Championship, but you know we had something like a hundred point lead at one stage, you know it was phenomenal. But the work we did in that winter was you know crazy, and it was a shame you know he could have gone on to sort of be a uh, you know a top rider, but you know. He, his leg ended up sort of around his neck and that sort of really ended his, let's say, Grand Prix career. And, that, and, that, and that's all it takes. That's how far away like they Ken, are. Of, Kenneth was like that, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm. The beginning of the season, that was, yeah, one in knee injury, wasn't it? And, mm. Yeah, so, you know, they're just, you know, it's like Mel Pocock, you know, you're just one little right, bit right. away from a, an injury and that's, that's, that's it. It's that's the sport, though. Eh? Yeah, I mean, same. With, let's say with Mado, and maybe it was you finished second in the world. Was it the following year you were already really, really prepared? Yeah, we finished. Yeah, we we finished second in the world um, in '96 with Mado, and then '97 we we sort of had done sort of winter tests in end of '96. We went to the first Grand Prix. I I arranged everything. That we went two weeks early. We had press to do at the GP track. Where was it? Yamaha, Plumway, wasn't Yamaha it? Indonesia. Yeah, it was um, at Yamaha Indonesia, all hooked up, and everything was going fantastic. And then, come the race weekend, he, his back went, and yeah, I think then he said, um, yeah, he got he got seen by I think back then Dr. Hadfield and these other people, and they said he needed back surgery and. I uh, look couldn't face that you know our season was over, and so I was like, yeah. uh, I become the doctor, and I'm like looking for <laughs> other alternatives. Anyway, we found this uh, through I think it was Andy Sutton. We found a chiropractor down in Bournemouth, and and uh, Zaidi or something, and mm. she looked at him and she said to him, "When did you break your leg?" And he's like, <laughs> 10 years ago." She said, "Well, you know your spine's bent," and then suddenly. Um, yeah, you know, it's it's had enough, you know, it's touching nerve and it's had enough. Put this heel in your, I think it was left or right foot, I can't remember. Oh, it's yeah. Got, so it's got to be one of them. And, yeah. um, <laughs> and and that's it. And, and I guess today he still wears it and it corrected his spine because he had right. one leg a little bit short than the other from his um, <laughs> broken leg. And yeah. he never had to have that back surgery. So right. That's crazy, yeah. 
yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, in, it's um, yeah, injuries are a nightmare in, in motocross. It's you know, it's yeah, but it's just a gutter. You know, you put I, all I, that with, with Zach. We won in Turkey. Brilliant. Yeah, weekend. it was a bit of a strange weekend being parked on an airfield airstrip and yeah. And be in the middle yeah. of the night. but then the following week he got you know spat off and broke his wrist and that was the sort of mm. but I mean all of those moments yeah winning with Carl Nunn winning with Zach at Turkey you know winning Fairy House at Ireland and, oh, yeah, yeah. and the... <laughs> you know with with Dean Ferris coming over with with Max leading that guitar for us there's oh, yeah. so many moments you know and and when when, when you're um, like when we finished second in uh, the world, and you know we were constantly winning some sort of British races, you know that, that that feeling goes away. You know it, you're spoiled, and it it just becomes accepted. And you know you actually don't get that um, you know feeling when you keep keep winning. You know it needs to be taken away from you, and then yeah. and you appreciate it again. Yeah, yeah I mean it was it was. You know, it must have been the same for Jonathan Ray in, in, in uh, World Superbikes. You know, he was winning, winning, winning. And then yeah. Bautista came along and suddenly, hang on, like, you know, I've got to up my game. I've got to change things and we need to work at this. And so you find that motivation and he comes back and win again. So that's, you know, that reignites the feeling of winning. And yeah. um, it's, yeah. it's in there and that's, um, yeah, that, that's, that's the feeling, you know, he, uh, all the different achievements, you know, whether it's yeah. that's so, so nothing. That's why nothing stands out because you, you know, it's that feeling that different levels of, um, you know, yeah. different riders and different things. You know, it's uh, yeah, it's it's good to get. Luckily, it's definitely not. Yeah, the highs and the lows are pretty extreme, and what we even like like uh, working on the dyno. It's it's exciting. Because you yeah. take, you're chasing little bits, little bits, but when you achieve it, yes, yeah, and then yeah, you, yeah uh, there's so much to the job. Actually, one thing does turn out like when Max had um, he had polled at Lomo, and, and I mean that, you know, that that was a very very hard year developing that bike because um, you Is that, know, that was accurate. No, that was on the MR in 2014, and um, oh, yeah. you know, we had it, we had everything so dialed in 13, and you know, Cosmo said to us, look, you know, I think we've got the bike in like September. And he said, like, you know, to get it to, to where this bike is and iron out any problems, you're going to be talking May. And I'm like, well, yeah. God, you know, but they, they know those, those people are experienced. F1 people are not fools. You know, they're. That was so. That went from, to the reverse cylinder. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, we tested and tested them, you know, Max went to the first GP, we sent off the 2014 bikes and then Max says, you know, that bike I tested last year was just <laughs> different, you know, it was so powerful, different and, you know, I said, Come. I yeah. said, look, my, my sponsor's got the whole bike, you know, upstairs and, you know, I can, you know, I can borrow it back, so we borrowed it back. And bear in mind the bikes have already shipped. And uh, uh, Max said, yeah, Max said, Jesus Christ, like, this is brilliant. And, um, yeah, you know, and he was, like, a good few seconds closer, uh, you know, qu quicker. Uh, I said, look, let's just put it in a bag. Let's take it on the plane. Let's go for it. So so we took, we did that. And then, yeah, he was pole and he, he led, you know, he whole shot and he led. He had a massive lead. He was the only one doing the quad. And then, like, two laps from the end, he, like, broke the vows. But he was over-revving it on the jump. And yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, to, to go from those highs of, of winning and, <laughs> you know, you've, you've just taken that. You know, and they're the sort of decisions, you know, most yeah, people say. One of Zach's, that was one of Zach's compliments about you, actually, was because uh, he said with Guy Honda how much he struggled because it was very corporate and rigid and he could have adjusted the bike. Yeah here a little bit or here a little bit but it had to stay here in line yeah but he said if, with Steve if I needed a pink fender that on that day he'd find one and get it you know it was like whatever yeah. 
That was a well, I don't know about, I don't know about cosmetics, but yeah, I mean, no, maybe not, but you know, that is, is, is yeah, worth, you absolutely. Know. And 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 you know, Matt, that was what Max said to me. He said, like, you know, I, I've ridden for um, you know, and this is not bigging me up, is everyone operates differently and they have different yeah. things. I mean, you know, people say, oh, your bikes break down, but in you know, in 30 years, you're gonna look as if you've broken down in more than teams that are here for two two or three years, you know, it's, yeah. and, and, um, you know, what, what, what Max said is, you know, you, each of teams have turned my revs down and I've never been able to, you know, reach my potential. You know, you've built me a bike and I'd rather push it back and be battling against hurlings yeah. and push a bike back. Um, and you know prove to myself that I, i've still got it and that's what he did and that's that's you know and that re you know that resurrected his career that resurrected yeah, yeah. dean ferris's career then and he went over to america you know the same with andrew mcfarland and yeah, he went to, then he went to america yeah. um you know and nanny and all, all of those and you know it's it's just finding that combination and um but you, you know, unless you've got a phenomenal budget and a team that is working just as hard behind you and testing with test riders and stuff like that, yeah. you know, it's difficult to do it in a small team and to do it regularly. And, you know, sometimes you do have to um, put it on the line because if you're not at the front, you know, you, your history, you know, in yeah. two laps, you're 20 seconds behind and you're never going to make that time up. No, no. It's... Um, you know, we, you know, we don't make careless decisions. Um, you just have to make calculated, and it's the same in Formula One. You know, if you're if you're not in the top one or two or three, it don't it don't matter. You know, and though, you know, Formula One with all the thousands of people they have and all the millions and millions of money, they still blow up. They still break things because. On that limit, they want to. They want to win, and where, wherever, wherever it is, there's a limit. You know, whether even whether whether it's Mercedes breaking down or Ferrari yeah. or, you know, but if they can get hmm. into the lead and get three sure. quarters away around the track, leading and then break up, it gives them more jubilation than finishing every race fourth. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Makes, yeah. You know, racing is about winning. Yeah. Um, and well, yeah. yeah. And that's um it's sort of yeah, you have to put everything on the line to get a good position and Definitely. you know that's the same for the rider. But yeah, it is it is um any motorsport is is difficult, you know, it's you're reliant on very tough. I think I think and, and say you learn a lot from say Cosworth. And, and yeah, it would be any Formula One. It just happens that we have an in there. And but I think a one over rev um, took takes off three hundred miles of uh, engine life. Well, if they over rev yeah. an F one, yeah, it takes three hundred miles of um, it's life. Yeah. Oh, they are. I could. I couldn't believe some of the things I saw at Cosworth. Yeah. Like, and I mean. You know, as we know, go back to Zach. He, you know, Zach was going to go back to America in 2009 because, um, you know, obviously we were sponsored, we were at factory with Ronaldi and that. And, you know, he kept breaking the bike. And because, you know, they hadn't had a rider like Zach, and it was like really. Um, yeah, Zach was asked to change his style, and you know he he, he lost the trust and he broke things, yeah. and he wanted explanations. Yeah. And um, you know, and that's how I got together with with uh, Cosworth is because I was asked. You know, Zach said, "Look, I need you know a rev bike, and I need a bike that can take my revs." Yeah. So you we, had to, we had to adapt to it. Yeah, we had to adapt to keep Zach. You know, he was a character that we wanted to keep and. Yeah, yeah he, um, he broke things we'd never seen him ever break. Like, uh, just, uh, I mean, 
and then you'd repair it, you'd fit, you'd, you'd find a fix to one thing and it moved the problem elsewhere. And it, yeah. But then, well, yeah. Undoubt, undoubtedly, with, you know, with RPM, you know, you, you in, we, you well, we, into, we did, we did telemetry, telemetry with him in Italy and it was on the downshifts, I think, into corners. Yeah. It was yeah. way, even like the, way over the limiter somehow. Yeah. He was yeah. Stamping down the gears. And yeah, that's where he was doing the. It was doing the damage, I think, wasn't it? It was. Yeah, yeah, or yeah, but yeah, you know, you you've got to learn and go through these things, and you know, so it was. I, I think I, I remember Max, you know, when when he went to uh, Husky, you know, he broke five engines in the first two GPs. Yeah, just because he had been used to being out of rev and. Right. stuff like that and yeah you know it's it's difficult for every team to learn a rider and you know they are so 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 different i find the other thing is you can't you can't emulate racing it doesn't matter what you put a rider on a practice track and tell him to Absolutely. go as hard as you can but you'll never ever get that no in, in things because well, they, they never get the red they never get the red mist do they no. on the practice track. so you you can't ever get, get you have to go racing to find those yeah. things. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I think... It's tough balance, eh? I remember Zach at uh, uh, Learop, he, he was sick in his helmet. He used to get sick, didn't he? Yeah. You know, because he was getting nervous before the start. And I think going to the line already without doing anything, he was at like 190 heartbeat. Yeah, he's just worked up. <laughs> yeah, and, and bear in mind, I think he went lactic intellectic um about 160 170 you know you're already going into lactic mode Not straight sure. away yeah. you know and so so you need to get that out of the way yeah, yeah and, and, and you know and that's why then suddenly riders got arm pump up and stuff like that oh yeah it's all a balance all right, all right. Um, any tracks or venues you hated to visit um, I guess it, it depends what happens there, but I've probably done it. So well, and, and, and you know, if you get if you get parked out of the way into a shitty oh. part of the paddock, I mean, I mean, that doesn't happen anymore, does it? But oh, no, this this year at Vulcan's Wild, we were parked by the Jet Wash Bay, and you know, I spent oh, yeah. a whole day just just um, pumping out water, trying to um, I couldn't couldn't set the tent up. Uh, it just kept flooding and flooding and flooding and um yeah it was it was terrible you know we was just completely flooded <laughs> and you know i went down and i spent like 300 quid on like um sort of stuff to be able to sort of fill up the holes and try and not, not be flooded all of the time it was just yeah. terrible yeah i mean that shouldn't happen and not it does yeah yeah it's not uh, i mean it's difficult when you, you've got to deal with the weather and yeah, we went to uh, like dig a channel to try and get away, and then the owner of Volker's Wild went mental and <laughs> stuff like that. So uh, yeah, I mean it's difficult. There's lots of tarmac at Volker's Wild. This, supposed yeah, to... but you're not kind of you know you're just off the road of the yeah, tarmac. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean I don't like uh, those sort of pits because you know everything's sort of too distant. You know. Yeah, yeah. That's, you know, I I know Matt Lee's my track, but. You know, there's atmosphere there because everyone is around at the same place. You know, it's not far to walk to well, you the, see the whole track, can't you, as well, from the paddock? Or yeah, it's not far to walk to the Park Ferme, and no, you, know, you walk up and down the aisles, and it's like packed. But yeah, it's sort of uh, Volker's well, Wild. It's almost like two different types of paddock. You know, you have got the one sort of long stretch, and then then you've got like the sort of the other bit that's all sort of where most people are, and it's all sort of Mostly muddy and that. Yeah. But, all right. Yeah, got to deal with it. Yeah, take it as it comes. It's all. Yeah. All right. So, you uh, mechanics, stroke owners, do a lot of hard work behind the scenes. No one sees. Um, you've got a favourite part of the job. I suppose winning. It's just winning. Yeah. <laughs> Achievement. Yeah. Uh, winning and getting spo good sponsors. <laughs> yeah, picking up sponsors. Yeah, I mean, um, you, you, you were, you're more, you're happier when you're 
in the workshop really eh? rather than on the phone and chasing yeah i mean yeah i mean (laughs) yeah i mean it's uh i do like developing and being yeah sort of I, i like to do like you know the development of things and trying to uh improve yeah. everything which is sort of constant and um but yeah i mean like booking ferries and stuff like that and everything that comes real easy and that oh. you know despite me despite me maybe being late for planes and that you know i'm actually organized on travel and you know i have all that booked up in sort of october and i do i do my planes and my uh hotels you know just in like an hour or so a couple of hours but then you know i have a lot of experience in that so i should know you know and i book the good hotels and i yeah, yeah. i um you know sort of research it a lot and um you know i get you know look for all the good bargains and that but we you know we always have the good hotels yeah yeah, yeah that's not really a part there's a not a part it's all you know i don't like um all got to be done yeah, yeah. Yeah. I like I like cleaning. I like cleaning the truck. Yeah, you know, that, that, quite O C D really with the I think being clean, eh? And yeah. And maybe uh, yeah. on the bike, just a little Yeah, little, I like attention to detail, although although yeah. I'm uh you know I, you're, I guess you're uh, messy, you're, you're pretty messy, like yeah. Yeah, like well, you're, I'm organised. You're but, calm that, but then you're late for flights. And <laughs> yeah, but I'm not late for flights because I'm lazy. I'm late for flights because no, I'm always trying to do too much. Doing too much all the time, you yeah. know. Too and uh, but that, that's you know that's that's my character. I try and always fit yeah. more in. And yeah. There is a word for it, and I've forgotten what it is. What, there is an actual to, word. Yeah, trying it's to more, uh, trying to fit more into the hours. Yeah, it, it's hours. an actual. Oh, what is it now? But it, someone, someone showed me it, and it's it's basically like a diagnosis you, kind of word. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's basically you. Like you know, you always think you always think that you've got more time than you have, and you always try to fit more than actually can be fitted in. And yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah. No, I, um, I guess uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not like. A messy worker because uh, I used to be really tidy with my my room and or, you know all the workshop and everything like that. But what you I guess in, yeah, gospel in your house is always immaculate. Yeah, because what um I guess what I am now is because I'm not out in the workshop all the time. I go and do half a job and then I move on to another job. And yeah. so in my mind, I've got all these jobs going on. Yes, yeah. I like to, I like to sort of do a job and know what I've got to do, you know, so I might go and start a bit of welding and know that I've got then another few hours of welding and yeah. or a truck, you know, because it's not really my job, but it's something I want to get done. Yeah. Um, you know, and then, mm-hmm. but then, yeah, I'll carry on and tidy up at night and do my stuff. Yeah. But, you know, the boys are in a good habit of, you know, they, they work on the bike and they put the spanner back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they work on the bike and they put the spanner back. I get so much you stick when I'm at work now about how OC tidy I am and my tools and everything. Yeah. I'm very, I'm very much like that. And I learned yeah. that from, from having to be that way, really. Yeah. And, and when, like when I was a mechanic, you know, I had all, I was minimalistic. I had all my tools on the, on the, oh, uh, on, the door. Yeah. on the door, you know, and I could turn my hand to it straight away and grab it. I, know, yeah. I like, I, I do like, you know organizing things and everything like that i just yeah i like but then i fly around and yeah i'll because because i think i've got six sets of snap-on tools i got one Uh, in the engine room so one in the spare one in the spare mechanics room and then i've got two in the roll cabs yeah one in the truck and so there's always like a a, almost a complete and then the the mechanics have their own stuff yeah, uh, but then I buy everything for you know, like the roll cabs and in the truck, and then practicing. Yeah, no, so I've got yeah, but OCD on Snap on. I got I'll set in the truck, set in the truck, two sets in the roll cabs, <laughs> one set in the practice van, one set in the workshop, 
one set in the edge in the suspension room and they've got like six torque wrenches you know that i've got and and then and then like geordie's geordie and nick have got their own yeah set that's that like, they use the workshop. that's one of the beauties of working on one type of bike you don't need that many tools no no but you, i'll bet you, I've got way more than you've got. I mean, I've got. I think I've got. Oh, yeah. I think I've got about. I must have at least ten torque wrenches. They all do different things, and but all the yeah. different tools you have when you work on a lot of different models. And yeah, that's one of the. Yeah. But I know you've always had a lot of stuff. Yeah, it, it just. It's nice to have everything there. You know, that's that's um. You know, that's that's the main thing. But no, I mean, yeah, it's. That's the key of a good mechanic is um, organized, you know, being tidy and efficient. Yeah, thinking ahead. Yeah, Especially when something may be gone wrong, you know, and being prepared for something yeah. wrong, like an engine, you know, you just got to be ready to respond quickly. Yeah, because there's not a lot of yeah. time between races, especially if something's quite quite bad, eh? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's being prepared. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah. I don't know if you. Out of all the top riders you work with, who was the hardest on the bikes? I had that one. I was like, they're all a bit different, eh? Some are hard on clutches, some are hard on brakes. Who used to mount? Yeah. Mel was pretty bad with rear brakes, wasn't he? Well, Mela melted to... rear brakes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, basically, the, anytime he, he, so he would use his technique to drag a brake, especially in the sand. Yeah. And every time I used to have to drill, um, drill the brake pin out. It was a nightmare. It was toast. And then he used to crack all the discs. Yeah. I think it was not until they went to the bigger sort of two forty discs mm. that he stopped cracking them. I mean, they used to, Talon. You know, got some. You know, we used to use solid disc a lot because right. it was just a nightmare. I mean, the pads would bend. Yeah, I remember. I remember. I remember it, yeah. They'd be, yeah, melted, completely yeah. melted. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> you don't get any. You don't get any power when you got the brakes on. You know that. <laughs> right, yeah, you got that. My, my dad used to say the 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 best way to the easiest way to go fast is to make your brakes good. <laughs> brake late. Brake late, yeah. Yeah, and um, which well, is true. Zach was hard on engines and. Zach was hard on engines, graphics, Other, brakes. Yeah, Billy was quite hard on cosmetic side, but not so much the engines, I would have said. Yeah, he was pretty good on the clutch on that one. Eh? He was pretty good um, on the engine, I would have thought. Yeah, yeah. Nanny was like a dream. He just I didn't use didn't much. Scratch, he didn't use scratch plastics, did he? No. <laughs> uh, I mean, you'd have Billy and, Billy and Nanny, and like Nanny's bike would look like a showroom, and Billy's would look like. Well, we had the aluminium tank down the car park. with those fans. Oh, yeah, the aluminium tank. Yeah, you have to blow them out every week with Billy because they crush yeah. them in knees. Yeah, that's right. And then, and then Nanny was just a dream. His bike was just like lovely. Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, you'd, you'd think, God, look at that bloody dodgy mechanic on Billy's bike, you know, like <laughs> looks 10 yeah. years old. Yeah, and then uh, Nanny's would look like oh, it's just come out the showroom. Um, yeah, it's yeah, funny. They're, they're all fast and they all ride, ride differently. It's funny. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, right. So, if you don't mind being honest, <laughs> who was hard work in general to work for? I said you to that question. I think. <laughs> yeah, I'm a hard tired master, but then there's there's I'm nothing there. Master, just yeah, it's just. Yeah. Well, because we were trying to achieve just trying more to than we should have been able to achieve with only a few people. Like it was only yeah, it was only a couple of us, and we were yeah, it was a lot to do. Yeah, right? that's um, you know, we were punching above our weight. That's basically what we were doing. Um, you, you know, we wouldn't give up till we succeeded, and you know, be winning. And um, but the hardest, like, it's been not really because I. Like people you work with, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like Jeremy Watley at the beginning, you know, when it was my first year mechanic, and you know, the first sort of few GPs, he was an absolute arsehole to me, and right, yeah, and um, that, but you know, then then I remember, always remember, uh, um, 
I think it was Finland, and we was I'd take his bloody caravan all the way up to um, all the way up to Finland, and uh, you know, so I got this bloody old caravan, and uh, and we, he jumped out, and he was parking me, you know, he was beckoning me on, to, yeah. you know, and then uh, I sunk, <laughs> and he's like, he got in the ass with me. I'm like, I'm thinking, oh, hang you? on. You're, you're, you're my eyes, you're telling me to come forward. Yeah. So anyway, then he was like, sort of a bit funny all weekend. And then, uh, <laughs> and then we, it, it was his job to pay for the fuel. But I always paid for the fuel and then claimed it back on yeah. later. But he was meant to pay the trip. You know, that's, that was just his deal with Yamaha. Right. And then we, we, got, we got to the garage and um, it was like an evening. I think Dobby was in there and repairing and I just sat there and he's like, what are you doing, bud? I'm like, I think. He said, well, are you not going to get the fuel? I said, no, nah, I've got no money. He said, <laughs> I said, it's your job. He said, what? Yeah, but you always do it. I said, yeah, I always do it, but I'm not anymore. And uh, <laughs> yeah. so, and there you go. And next thing I had him up against the uh, side of the van. And oh, man. <laughs> but after that, he was, uh, after that, he was, absolutely fantastic you know for the rest of the season and you know he's a great guy great engineer and uh you know unfortunately he lost his dad like early and so you know he had a lot of hardship to deal with but yeah yeah you know, he he was a very very talented bike uh you know guy on a bike and you know it was it was really good company and you know and that it just took that sort of you know to get his respect to, um yeah he needed that he, he's probably testing you i guess he was testing you, maybe. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and you got to let you that, that was one of them times that, you know, got suddenly to... I snapped. <laughs> so, yeah, like I say, after that, it was fantastic. And, you know, yeah, I've got a lot of respect for him. Um, but, yeah, so he was, that was hard. And then even, um, yeah, even Andrew... Yeah, Andrew, we, we we had to have. Oh no, no, it wasn't Andrew. It was Dean, Dean Ferris. You know, was in Thailand, and mm. you know, he's like said to me, "Oh, he just, I think he like finished second, and they come in and just like all hot and bothered, and like, you know, where's my coke? Where's my coke?" And uh, I'm like, "Well, I don't know." And he's like, "You should have it." And and, and I, I just sort of sat him down. I said, "Look, if you yeah. ask me to get a coke ready, cause, you know." for after the race and have it there for you i'll have it but if you don't ask me but you expect me to mind read what you're doing yeah then you know that's not right no. so again you know i had a word and you know things were fine after that and yeah yeah you know, right you know and and like Maylie used to say to me like just never ever speak to me about the race after the race you know uh, just let it if there's anything, you know, we'll think, you know, wait till the next day, you right. know. So I always, I, I always sort of remember that and respect that, you know, that, you know, there's too many emotions after the yeah. race. You know, the, heat, the heat at the moment there, yeah. Yeah, so it's better to like wait if, the, you know, you need to speak about something. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's um, you know, and they're the sort of situations sometimes, you, you know, you get into and, but yeah, they're they're very very far and few between. It's best to get, apart from the arena you know, in the early two thousands was got pretty punchy, didn't it? Was it's just so intense? Yeah, wow. Well, yeah, it was just always there was always tension in the air. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they they were. It's like they were good fun. It was good fun. Yeah, they were. They, I mean, you know, they were, that's what they were. I bet it was the same when we went to America with um, Zach and we did some of the. Um, like supercross well yeah like arena cross like in the in oh, like local yeah. local barn sheds and stuff like that you know like it's <laughs> it's like death race 2000 <laughs> i remember tyler bowers and uh zach oh, they right. were like and then then you got like these uh rednecks going put the hammer down put the hammer down i mean yeah i mean all of those are just fantastic experiences and um, yeah, yeah. you know you know, you have to be there to sort of see it going on. I mean, and then you got Mel, who 
got loose on the doing an arena cross, and he, I think the guy was just about to go over the checkered flag, like second. Next thing, Mel wipes him out, and he's like two lanes away, and he's just like missed the lane and gone straight ahead to the next yeah. road that's going across him to the finish, and he took Matey out. So, yeah, but now it's um, right. Yeah, it's just. You know, any, any rider that sort of doesn't show you respect or anything, you know, it's just best to sort of nip it in the bud because you, know, early, don't want, early, yeah. you don't want to, you don't want to be 100% behind someone, yeah. you know, if they, you don't want any atmosphere because, you know, you, no. you know, they're trusted in you in their life and, yeah. you know, that, and, and they're the advert for your work. So, you mm -hmm. know, you need to have a common goal and, you know, that's the worst thing as if, if um, you know, I would rather work for someone that finished third, fifth, than someone that won and treated you like a piece of shit. Hmm. You know, because at the end of the day, yeah. You, yeah, you know, racing is. Let's say now, racing is forty hours in a year. You know, the actual race is twenty races of half an hour. Hmm. Two races, it's you know, 40 hours and that's the championship. So outside of that, you've got 300 and... I never thought about it like that, actually. <laughs> you've got 51 weeks where you want to be happy. Yeah, exactly. You know, so you don't want yeah. to be working with someone that's like, you know, making your life misery. And the no. same no. same with workmates. You know, you need to yeah. get everyone to be working together. Otherwise, it's, you know, I've, one I've, bad... I've had that in jobs since, you know, you, you get someone yeah. who's funny with you or they're trying to show a bit of authority. Just yeah. get things, not, you know, just get it all out in the open quite early on, yeah. Yeah, yeah otherwise it just fester and, you know, it's oh, yeah. and you don't, you know, and that's, luckily it's sort of, it's been... That doesn't happen often, eh? Everyone's pretty professional at that level. Yeah, yeah, I mean... We're all after the same know, thing. You're all on the common goal, aren't you, so... Yeah, yeah. I mean, some people are there, you know, just like for the think that it can be glory, but then you know, it's very short lived. Yeah. Uh, that's that's um. No. But yeah, I mean, in general, you got to. Yeah, I guess that's with any job you've got to enjoy it. But I mean, you know, I I, I think what helped me a lot is that I did nine years in engineering and you know in a good camaraderie in British Rail. You know, we got sort of two and a half thousand people working and you're working to a regime you're clocking on clocking off you look out for your mates and yeah, yeah. you know you, you're in a community where you sort of you know chat a lot and all those sort of things yeah this is a very sort of you know more lonely individual job and yeah. you need a lot of self motivation but yeah. by working in that sort of environment beforehand you appreciate the freedom and that you're Traveling the world, and you're doing something different every single day, rather than, you know, repetitive work. Let's say at somewhere yeah. like, yeah, British Rail making trains, and you know, although we had a lot of variation, and that was fantastic, you still, you know, could be you welding you five five thousand. Eh? You learn to weld at British Rail because you are yeah, I, I, a shit hot welder. Eh? You're like obviously. Some yeah, well, that was my trade, a welder. Yeah, <laughs> he's pretty, uh, pretty handy, like yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, it, that all came back to me wanting to build a frame when I was young, and that's why I became a welder and, and it, went yeah. on. To, yeah, and then I qualified in uh, metallurgy, which is like, oh, yeah, non-destructive and destructive materials. That's why I love all the machining and the materials and understand and yeah, you know, the reason why constantly our bikes are light is because yeah you know, my detail for uh you know for getting the bike light um you know it's helped by my knowledge my knowledge of materials and yeah. you know it's not guesswork no uh, yeah yeah i think so um yeah you know and there's not some you know people you know they think of aluminium as aluminium and you know aluminium to me is a range of about 100 different types of aluminium that have all different applications well, you know like, and if you, well, you you've got triple clamps that need a certain type of aluminium then another exactly yeah a bolt yeah. yeah yeah i learned all that i was like that's that's what you could there's so much you can learn yeah there, yeah you know, machining and mm. 
Uh, yeah, uh, so. so it's, it's cool. Um, it says hard one again. I've skipped a couple of them because you kind of answered them already. But on their yeah. play, who would you think is the fastest rider you've worked with? Out and out, it's hard, eh? It's so so hard. I mean, you know, you had. I heard Watley was pretty. I mean, but I never saw him. Right, so yeah, what, uh, yeah, Watley was phenomenally talented, um, you know, and I thought Billy going around Japan was the, the lines, Billy around there, but then you know, Carl around Plomion and oh, yeah, stuff like that, and you know, around Ling, and and then you know, also Zach ultra fast, you know, Tonus at um, at uh, Hawkstone and pre internationals and those sort of things was phenomenal. Goes on. There Max, is. Max at um, Qatar was just unreal, and so, and the same at Lommel. Um, it's it's so so so, you know, difficult. You know, Andrew at, at um, Gallarati when he won. You know, yeah, he was, won yeah. won practice. You know, you say win practice. You know, everyone goes for times in practice. He was fastest in practice in warm up in qualifying in the qualifying race in warm up the next day and then he won the first and the second race you know that that day was phenomenal for him and that you know that sort of kick-started his career and that's yeah, yeah. you know and he came off that you know the week before he, he rode terrible and got one point in um st john de angeles and i remember that's yeah so yeah those yeah it's it's great to watch when there's sort of poetry in motion and yeah, it, it's yeah, they, they can all do it sometimes. They wake up and it clicks, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you, do, you don't even expect it a lot of times, yeah. Like Zach in Ireland, I that came out of nowhere, but he was fastest in practice, fastest, yeah. He did the one the qualifying race, yeah, race the next day, and then set, unfortunately the bike broke. But the second, yeah, race, it seemed to go yeah. like that, they'll be quick, they'll go somewhere, and then they'll be really quick all weekend, yeah. Not just I mean, yeah, that was that was a funny track with all that wood chip. And that was strange. Oh, it was it. Was it rat trace bike caught a light? The rear brake. Did it on the wood chip? Oh. Yeah, yeah like the whole thing. Track was just covered. Hey. In track was covered in wood chip. Yeah. Yeah. Weird, he, yeah. He was battling with rat tree in the second race. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. Actually, go back to my question. Zach, <laughs> Zach was hard on a bike. <laughs> He was running oh, yeah. hard on a bike, wasn't he? Very. But, I did a lot of engines. <laughs> Built a lot of engines. But that, we're saying that Springboard on the Cosworth thing, and that, that took you to another level, really. Yeah. Because that, that was, yeah. that, it was going to another world, isn't it? The Formula yeah. 1, that Cosworth. Incredible, yeah. Incredible. Fast. Yeah, well, uh, you know, the main thing is they, you know, they studied and gave you reasons as to what, what was mm. happening. And, yeah, like you say, you know, on, on an over rev or downshift, Zach was hitting sort of 17, 17 and a half thousand RPM. Yeah, that's what I, I remember it in 17, yeah. It's, uh, you know, they're phenomenal sort of <laughs> figures. And that's that's even with a, le a limiter set at 15. That's what, that's what I was trying to say, yeah, it was going over the limiter, even, you, you yeah. know, set, but he was... So then if you set a limiter at 13 to go to 15 yeah. or 16, then... You wouldn't have the power, so it's no. It's that balance. It's tricky, isn't it? It's, yeah, you know, it just work, needs to not downshift. They can work. Hey. A lot out. They work a lot of that out before it even built. It's all absolutely, built. yeah. It's very, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, got, yeah. I've got quite a lot of the notes and that and stuff. That it's quite amazing. yeah. Um, it's about the the question about the pressures of the job. And sort of like the safety side of the bike, things that go wrong out of your hands. It's, I thought, okay, it's, yeah. it's going to happen, eh? Yeah, it's motorsport yeah. and things going to happen. Yeah. I mean, in, in in general, you know, we, you know, we don't, we don't never have sort of touch wood. You know, things come right. loose or come off like seats or brakes and stuff like no, that. No, um, it's not really. Uh, you know, you'll get you'll get people, and you know, I remember like comments sort of 
at the Nations in Redbud, you know, with Tommy burning his clutch out and, oh, bloody hell, you know, what sort of mechanic. And although I'm not mechanic, ultimately, I take the blame for, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, for any of our mechanics. But, you know, like I said, uh, and someone said to me, and I'm like, okay, I said, do you know what a Chinese burn is? And they said, yeah. I said, well, you know, rub, rub your... Uh, wrist and I said and see how hot it gets and I said yeah I said well imagine just like keeping the finger on the clutch and stuff like that at, right. you know at sort of 5,000 revs 6,000 revs because obviously the clutch not going same as the piston mm. and see how hot it gets then the water gets and then the oil gets hot the water gets hot then yeah. it starts smoking you know that's why it happens to Eli Tomac it happens to them I said if you've got a rider that's riding like that there's nothing in this world that you can do to stop that going on. And then material then gets hot and then it starts warping. And yeah, it's, it's just, that's when you, go, that's, when you go to Lommel, the, the rider needs to understand that there's a, then there's a certain extent, a certain amount of, yeah. I mean, you, you see on Jeffrey's, um, pit board, you know, off the clutch, off the clutch, off the clutch, yeah. you know, they need to be reminded. They know it's, um, yeah, it's, it's won't make it to the rain. The yeah, it's the death of it, and you know, and that's. Uh, I, I always remember Rob Herring was phenomenally hard on clutches, and he would melt the water pump gear, and then the bike. You know, this is when he was with even factory Yamaha, and then they had to make. Uh, that was go back in the days when they water pumps were like, you know, plastic. Then they had to make, uh, you know, aluminium ones, and then but then something else would go. Yeah, you know. It, a casing would heat up and then the seal would pop out and things like that. It just, you just keep on moving the uh, parameters of what's going to go wrong. And it's, um, it's hard, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, you can't replicate racing either. So it's really difficult. No, trying to find no. Uh, it's, yeah, you can't. Uh, and then, there's no yeah, it's, it's just difficult. And you know, the rider does have to, you know, you can get into a higher car and you can ride it, drive it normally or you can you can rag it you know and if, if you, you can, rag it you can break it you can crash it into a tree in spain <laughs> yeah that's right or you could like abuse it and yeah do those sort of things and uh park it back up and park it back up like <laughs> smash the bits yeah yeah but that's not as bad as the one in brazil that i had <laughs> but yeah that's um Right. Yeah, it, it's just, you know, you just need the riders to understand. I mean, with, you know, again, I go back to Formula One because we have to, you know, if you were in football, you would look at the premiership as the pinnacle, whether it's the ground, whether it's the grass, whether it's the way they hang the nets, the corner post, everything. They're at the pinnacle because they have the money and they have the backing yeah. and the resources. Yeah. And Formula One has all of that and is at the pinnacle. You know, they they develop things for space they develop materials you know for all sorts so they're at the pinnacle and you know they have you know their their drivers you know they sit down and they they go through charts they go through and they understand you know and you, you imagine uh trying to you know say to say to tommy tommy Need to put your revs down. I want you coast in. I want you coast in. Don't worry about the others passing. I need you to finish this race. Yeah. I go. It, tell me to go around. Shut up, you used to can, you know, like, you know, <laughs> just move on. Like, Let me know I'm going for this race. And yeah, yeah and then you then you'll be pushing the bike back or something. Yeah. You know, it's there's a lot but, of that, um, people, isn't there? They they're always on the radio telling them nurse it, you know, you need to absolutely yeah, and that's what i'm saying if that's if brilliant. with all their resources and and knowledge exactly, it yeah. still comes down to that driver can still abuse um yeah you know and when they break they break in a big way you know oh, and yeah. a very expensive oh, way yeah um but yeah i mean you can just try to sort of educate people really and that's that's just it and it's yeah like, there's there's no, you know you if you think about a motocross rider who comes you know he's basically missed quite a lot of school because you have the, all the nationals and stuff like that yeah. um and you know you go away to the races and do this that and that and then 
and then suddenly you're a professional or if you're a professional you know if you're a lawyer or if you're a welder or anything you know you go through four years of training you go to college yeah. you know suddenly you're a motocross ride around riding around you know a track in britain winning school boys and the next minute you're a gp rider yeah with no you know yeah. education into into how to handle all of that Oh, yeah. You know, you can tell people, but you still need months and months, to, you know, even years to learn a, a trade. Yeah. And that, that's, and that's, that's the big thing, you know, they, okay, if you, if you had, you know, the resources and the money to be able to, you know, like, same with the Olympics and that, and take them from, you know, 11 years old, you know, into a, you know, into a, a proper academy and everything like that, and that, that they're taught about everything and that you know they're programmed to to be that motocross grand prix winner yeah um it, it's difficult isn't it Did i they... mean but luckily luckily everyone else is similar yeah uh, you know they all go through that same thing but you know the reason when when paul uh finished second in the world championship to tortelli you yeah. know that that year tortelli came out of the um he was 16 wasn't he? he was 16 and he came out of the like the french academy of excellence oh, yeah. for uh, training and everything i mean he looked like arnold schwarzenegger i remember that he, yeah. he came out of there and, and the same when grant langston won the world title both of those i always remember came into the season looking like arnold schwarzenegger and then you know during the season they they lost all their muscle and you know went back but they came in so physically prepared and they, um yeah you know they, they didn't carry on that fitness they it you know they lost all that sort of let's say muscle bulk but right yeah but they did you know they, well, they, did they the trained science, the science part of it maybe yeah i mean it's getting a lot lot better you know it's a lot more science science yeah yeah in it but you know it's nowhere near the level of no. what football's gone to now with you know gps trackers on you know all their movements and everything like that well, um yeah and 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 cycling you know if if you took british cycling as well, how she, that's she, progressed my niece, my niece has already been on she's 14 she's already been on the british cycling academy yeah well i now. mean like it's they take them they, inve they invested they invested heavily yeah. and you know it's paid off you know you've got all your sort of your Bradley Wiggins and your Froome and all of those guys that are all one Tour de France and everything and you know all the velodrome and everything and you know Britain was never good at cycling no. you know it, it was never us but it just shows you what money and and um, resources you know can do for, regarding training and I think that was what I think that was kind of ultimately, ultimately we know that's why KTM are producing so many winners is because they have such a, resources. such a yeah such a good program because of their resources yeah um you know and it's because it's their main 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 focus you know in motor gp it's different because yeah. you know kawasaki in superbikes yamaha honda in motor gp you know that's their you know that's their baby and yeah. it's difficult to do everything and um but yeah, I mean, knowledge and science is is the key to sort of bringing youngsters into the and education into into being sort of you know another level of riders. I mean, I think that you know, was, I've seen a big that was Jamie's complaint already when he was speaking the other day was that the you know, the French put that into then the Italians do they put they put uh, some that sort of stuff into the riders that side yeah some of that those academies and that. Yeah, um, that's where we're lacking a bit on this in this country. Well, yeah, because you know it's we're we're not funded by the lottery and, and not, uh, the government. If, if, yeah, if we yeah, you know, unfortunately, you you know, because I have applied to UK lottery and stuff like that before. Unfortunately, that is not on the remit. You know, it's all human. Powered um, sports, you know, whether it be gymnastics, whether it be running, cycling, mm -hmm. rugby, football, you know, there's 
there's money and resources available for that and facilities for for any motorsport it's not but no in in, in a in italy and um so france you know it you know you have Le Mans and you know Tour de France and all those sort of things. You know that may be more important to them, and they, yeah. especially especially in Spain. You know Spain is a is a MotoGP producer factory. Oh, totally. But yeah. in but in superbikes, it's England. Yes. Yeah. 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 You know because because you have healthy competition from and they've really uh, the British championship. Yeah. From the British championships. Yeah. So it's not. The ACU's full. No, you know, they can't. They can't run a, a million pound program. No. Where are they going to get that million? Yeah, they haven't got that lottery yeah. or government money. Well, ultimately, the ACU is made up of however many thousand uh, members. Yeah. yeah. And we're talking about ten people out yeah. of oh. you know yeah. two hundred thousand license holders. You know. Yeah. They're all thinking, well, that money should go into grassroots or to this or to that or to the trials club or to the motocross or the enduro club. And, right. yeah. you know, how is that going to benefit us, you know, yeah. giving, you know, a million to sort of a motocross? It, it, it would be lovely. Yeah, but, yeah. But it, it, the realism of it is yeah. there's, no, there's no government funding, at, you know, at this present time. No. Uh, and, the, and the same for... You know, but there's seven out of ten Formula One cars um, men, uh, teams are based in the UK. UK, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we 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 have the technology and we have the resources here for that. Yeah. And you know, our, our industry of F1 is huge and and it's well respected. And this is the epicenter of Formula One. Yeah. But motocross, you're in England and you're not in the epicenter of it. You're you, you know, you just got to get on and do what you do, or you move and try and make it in or go to Europe, America, or wherever. But it's never yeah. easy any there. I mean, it's still only the cream of the crop. That you know, if we look at our British Championship, there's more riders getting paid at the British Championship and earning money than there is at any of the other yeah foreign championships. Yeah, yeah. And, and again, the same with. Um, to put it with superbikes yeah uh, you know the british superbikes is a very very healthy um sport you know for the riders and you know for the fans right yeah um just it's not motocross's time it was in the past it's not at the moment it may be in the future yeah, but yeah maybe maybe with the whole infrastructure being better as the gps and that maybe in the future there'll be more option for that but yeah yeah, I mean, it's it's difficult to know. I mean, at the moment, but it's, it's, you know, it's no one's fault, you know, and no one no, can no. magic up that money. It, it no. has to come from somewhere. It's not deliberate. And it? no, no, if you're not funded by the government, yeah, then it's it's pretty, you know, it's going to be pretty hard to get a sponsor to oh, put right. in a million to train yeah. kids. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> We just got to try and do the best we can with what we can and be happy with it and, yeah, um, you know, or do something about it and move somewhere else or, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be, you know, without, let's say, lottery funding, it's going to be very difficult, mm -hmm. you know, to sustain a program. You know, I remember they used to give quite good money to coaches and that, but, you know, like I say, sometimes that got abused and, you know, it's not sustainable. If you, yeah. You know, again, you know, the ACU had the monopoly of all the licenses. Now there's like MCF, there's Nora 92, there's, yeah, you know, different federations. Help so, no, no, you know, so we, we just got to try and uh, everyone's got to try and get yeah. their heads together and try and figure out, um, you know, a way forward to, to help yeah, the yeah. young. And it, it you know, it's difficult, for, like I said before, it's difficult for the teams to do that nowadays, to be able to bring them through because, you know, we're, we're so busy, exactly. you know, in, away in GPs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. All right. That's about it, I think. I've got yeah. 
I've got to go out for work. I'm back at work, so. <laughs> um, is, am I? Is there any soap? Time that? You won't go. Hey. Home. You're gonna go home. Just crash, uh, in, crash in the truck or something. I don't know. I I I was sort of coming in at seven and go home at like twelve. Yeah. <laughs> Still, I don't know. Like I say, I think the the key to it is not not being stressed. Yeah. Well, you don't. Yeah. It, there was some. How do you cope with the pressures? Of running it, but I, I, I've never understood how you manage to do it. <laughs> I really don't know, like, but I've known you a well, it's just, it's just, just a gift. It, you know, it's just, yeah. it's just how I am. It's how I'm programmed, and yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, and that's you. Yeah, you are what you are, and yeah, and no. yeah, I've just been sent this path. I don't yeah. know, you know, it's, it's, um, yeah, because it is. You know, obviously there's going to be pressures now and again, but I'm very adaptable, so I don't try to. Mm. You know, getting stressed makes you inefficient. Yeah, no, I think I think one of the only time, the I think the only well, the, the worst one thing that sticks out of my mind is is um, when Max, I say at Lomor had whole shot it, uh, you know, he'd won and oh, yeah. qualifying race and everything like that, and then he. Uh, went to line and the bike it wouldn't fire up oh i saw that yeah i remember watching that and and yeah and you've gone from this you've gone from this high of He's winning it walking to line weekend. with the whole weekend's gone great. you know with everything you know and you're going there and finally you know because that was a like i say that that season was you know traumatic because they made us uh you know and that's obviously why in the end i left yamaha was that they they made us sort of get off the thirteen and, and concentrate on the fourteen and we told them it would be how long it'd be. But, yeah, yeah. You know, especially when Max was already podium. That so we was constantly testing at at, at yeah. the way to the races and there were so many different things with that new engine to get it you know that, we, we, that good in the end though, didn't you? We got it good we got it at, you know fantastic in the end, but it was August but by the time you know he started winning yeah, and yeah. and when max like you know he's there trying to start the bike and then you know the 15 second boards up and he's got his hand up and oh, no. and i've just gone i'm like <laughs> yeah uh, there was uh, there was no there was no feeling that i've ever felt like that because you've gone from such a high jubilation of going going their pole yeah. to to uh, to this like no man's land where you're like there's absolutely nothing you can do you've just gone from hero to zero and i suppose that was the, worst, I, the worst thing about it was you couldn't do anything at that point no and, and i'm like there's nothing where, where you've got the um <laughs> where you got the sky box and, oh. and when the riders go they close off all the curtains and then the mechanics go to the mechanics thing yeah. and uh yeah and and I just went behind the curtain and I was like, oh my God. Oh, and then <laughs> and then I sort of peeked out and saw, you know, Max got the bike fired up and then uh, I saw him get like the, the whole shot. And then yeah. suddenly I'm like, relief. I'm like still peeping out. And then, yeah, then he came round past the, uh, you know, the start finish line and then he starts, you know, the first lap. Yeah. And then he's in the lead. And I'm like, Walked to the pits and yeah. that that was you know that was terrible you know that was such a high and a low. Um, but yeah, that's. Why, did you figure that one out on that? Did you why it happened? Ah, uh, yeah. So so basically, um, the the T, the TPS uh, sensor. Yeah, the throttle position. Yeah. It was it was. I think maybe where he squashed the tank a little bit or whatever. It the TPS. It, it was never setting. It was actually hitting the. Um, I was hitting. It was the hitting the tank. So we we'd changed TPSs. We'd tried everything because it was very very experimental then because we were using like yeah, yeah. you know carb on the uh, pro body differently and everything like that. And yeah. it was just this freak thing because you know we went there with a plan to like change the engine like on each race just yeah. to be sure and yeah. And, and obviously that creates, so then you have to set TPS and stuff like that on, um, you know, we, we want to make sure everything was dead clean before and, and 
yeah, it was just that the tank was pushed on a little bit, and when you set the TPS, it was it was actually hitting against the uh, TPS, so you, you actually couldn't get right. a, a zero rating, and that's why it wouldn't start. So when it it's putting fuel in and too much fuel in or something, yeah. Yeah. So when it did when it did start, obviously it 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 ran and it ran obviously absolutely fantastic. Yeah. But <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, it's funny that one sticks out then because there's other. There's well, yeah, because it, it you were at such a high and then it, because it had been such a traumatic season. Yeah, hard um, season, yeah. You know, because we were winning at the beginning of the season, then we got made to go on to the fourteen, and then we were, you know, I mean, there was. Yeah. Absolute little, 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 little things like you know, you're going fantastic, and then suddenly you got valve leakage because you need to make a valve um, inlet quarter of a mil more to take away heat and stuff like that. It was, yeah. you know, and timing chains that would work like brilliant beforehand, and then because the shorter stroke and different, it was putting different resonance forces onto it, and at that time people were having trouble with timing chains and. Yeah, you know, we had cranks made and everything that used to work, and it was just some harmonic thing. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but but once it was figured, it was brilliant. But by that time, um, you know, it was sort of too late. And yeah, yeah, Jesus, we worked some hours that year. It was traumatic. But Amazing. so it was such a jubilant uh, thing to to finally, yes, you know, win. Yeah, yeah, oh, I can imagine. Yeah, no, but, and. Uh, but yeah, that was that was that. But yeah, it's, I think that was the worst ever. <laughs> so right. But yeah, when when uh, that happened once in the British Championship, we had two uh, ECUs go down, and and but because the ECUs were done by Rinaldi, and it, you yeah. know it was nothing to do with us, um, it's easy just to blame someone. Yeah. But so. So when we do what we do, you know, we take on such a uh, a responsibility. Yeah. You know, to try. You know, that's why it's so hard and personal. That you know, it's easy to say, "Oh well, not my fault." You know, they did the suspension. Mm -hmm. Blame them. So, so to be connected to the whole bike and do the whole bike and take the responsibility yeah. of the whole bike, mm -hmm. you know, you're you're putting yourself on a pedestal to be. Um, yeah, you know, shut down and blamed because that's you know, and and my job. Well, is I, got to, lot, I got a lot out of doing the whole bike. That was like a big part yeah. of it for me. Like I wouldn't want to do it any other yeah. way. And no. Zach, Zach couldn't believe I did it. everything: the suspension and the built the yeah. dyno and did yeah. it because they don't do it over there, do they? It's no, no, very different. And um, yeah, and that's it's. Yeah, it's a big responsibility, and uh, but you you know, but you live by the sword and die by the sword. Yeah, yeah. You know, you get the you get the achievement, and you get the the adrenaline, and the accolation, and the wins, and you know, it makes it all worthwhile. Um, Definitely. But it's uh, it, you know, it's a tough tough sport. Yeah. You know, the the bike sort of right. you know I I saw yeah like even today even yesterday I saw you know. Tim guys are win the race in Slovenia and then it DNF the second one and right. you know it's blown the engine up and that's those right. things happen you know it's yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's difficult you know but hmm. you know you just have to be confident that you know you've done you've done what it should should be done and you know and obviously you get a lot of keyboard warriors and stuff like that and you know, and I say to them, you know, I'd welcome any of them to come into the environment and yeah, that's right. <laughs> and uh, you know, and understand. Yes, yeah. that's all. A lot of it is just uh, people don't realise, eh? But absolutely, yeah. I mean, uh, that goes for but, the, that goes for everything. That's the government and everything in it. You just don't know what's going on behind closed doors. No, no, you only see what you want to see. The end result, yeah, or what you, what you want you'll see. So. But yeah, and it's easy to blame someone after the event. Yeah, yeah. As we see people blaming the government and all that sort of stuff. Well, yeah, but that's what people like to moan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> normally the British like to moan, but yeah. yeah, luckily I'm not one of them. No, 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 I, I don't even look at it all, just ignore it. It's not no. worth worrying about anything you haven't got. All right, then, well, but thanks, there. yeah. Thanks where's the time?
He says, it's, yeah, any social media. It's time now. By, uh, oh, it's uh, by his bed. <laughs> one o'clock, so yeah. What's time? One. <laughs> one? Yeah. So, uh, Jesus. <laughs> I thought Mayla I thought Mayla could talk for three hours and mine's like what? Pretty good, yeah. Three hours as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean like it's good to catch up with you for a long time and uh Yeah, I'm on yeah, I'm, you know, I'm miles away now. I have been freezing so but there were good days. That was all best yeah best part of yeah, my working life. I don't think I'll ever get a match anything near it, so No, you're probably wise not to. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I miss it, but I wouldn't want to miss my kids growing up either. So it's no. That's, that's well, luckily, you know, like you can get a balance of that now. But yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, I can. I think. But you live at the end, at the wrong end of the country now. Exactly. <laughs> right. Right. Thank well, thanks for everyone looking, and uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, be be good. But um, thanks for your time. Right. No worries. Cheers, uh, See you later.